Hello, and thank you for joining me on this channel where we may be dazed, but we are not confused. This is a Find Your Oasis reading for the sign of Libra. So the purpose of this reading is to offer some insight into a situation that might be tricky, there might be some confusion, and just a general sense of not being able to connect with maybe your own intuition or get a sense of clarity about the direction in which you need to go in order to feel like you are the most balanced within yourself. So for that reason, we use the metaphor of the desert and we use the metaphor of the oasis to depict a place of healing and integration where you're able to take all of the trials and tribulations that you experienced in this place and find the lesson in it, which is going to help you personally to overcome and become stronger within your own character and within your own self. So, all right, Libra, looking at your cards, the reason that you are feeling as if you are in a desert situation is this strong energy of being watched, but watched in a way as if it's to see you fall. All right. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily someone actually coming out and telling you straight up that they're waiting to see you fall, but I feel like you're picking up the energy of people who are recognizing that you're in a new beginning you are taking some steps to do something new after a phase of going through a lot of troubles. All right, the card I have for you is the first light card. It says beginning a new cycle. And on this card, it's like winter and it's night. And then this new cycle is, you know, the sun's coming out. It's starting to melt the snow and the frost and you're coming into spring. Spring is a time of fertility and growth and abundance. Whereas winter is known um, after fall comes and kills everything off and things just kind of, you know, that's that harvesting time. Winter is just very cold and barren and there's nothing there. So you may feel as if you are coming out of a space in your life where it was very barren and cold and there wasn't a lot of life there. This is similar to a desert biome, except the difference is it's also cold instead of being hot. And so I feel like there could have been um, people in your energy or in your environment who were not very compassionate about where you were. They really, um, I don't want to say that they didn't feel sorry for you, but in the sense that you were struggling and you probably could have used some empathy and maybe, you know, a shoulder to lean on. I don't feel like you were getting that. And so now that you're coming into this new place where you're starting afresh and I feel like it's visible. I feel like people can clearly see that, you know, spring is coming, that winter is over, the snow is melting, you know, just like we go outside and we see that, you know, the wind, we can see visible signs that winter is going away. Um, even though we have like groundhog day and things like that to kind of, have a little fun with it and say like, Oh, is it really going to be spring? Or is it going to just snow again the next weekend? And we're just kind of up, down, up, down, up, down. I feel like it's very clear that this is over for you and you are moving into a new space. So I feel like this could be some family members, um, that are maybe, maybe even confused about the fact that you were able to get out of this situation because there seems to be like a cycle, you know, because it says beginning a new cycle. I feel like there was a cycle of being permanently trapped in these winter spaces. And there's almost this expectation that you should not have gotten out of that. And because you are, you are picking up that there's some energy of kind of waiting for you to go back into winter. I don't feel like you got a lot of congratulations about it either. I don't feel like you're being celebrated or... Um, encouraged because you came out of that situation either. So it feels like you're taking action and you're beginning to communicate this new sense of who you are and what it is that you're moving into. Um, and 
you're having to do this by kind of walking away from the direction in which other people are going. You're going into this new beginning, no matter who is coming with you or not. And you have this feeling of being protected by angels. All right. Because I have this card here. And so there's this sense that, you know, your guides, your, um, I feel like your ancestors as well are looking after you because sometimes if you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of family support or you are fighting generational curses or things that have been in your family line for a long time, um, things that are coming out in your DNA about, you know, trauma and experiences that you had that are coming up in your life, they're being triggered in your life and you're combating all of that and trying to do something different. If you don't have familial help or people who are a part of your same lineage in the physical to help you, this triggers your ancestors to help you. All right. Or your spirit guides or whatever it is that you look at. Um, if that's too metaphysical for you, you could even say within your own epigenetic DNA, you kick something in that starts to give you information about how to overcome certain environments and certain situations based off of information that's coded into your DNA that will help you and will become released when you come up against certain situations. All right. And so um, I'm also picking up too that some of this feeling of being watched, I feel like you may have even had like this energy of feeling like you were haunted by like negativity. Like there was always like this, this energy of something kind of waiting for you to fail. And at some level, I feel like you're picking that up because you legitimately have people around you, um, most likely family members that are expecting you to struggle and not do well because that is the legacy, um, not the permanent legacy, but it's one that has been perpetuated for such a long time in your family or in your lineage um, that it feel, it's just palpable. You can pick that energy up. You know, I'm, I'm hearing the phrase of people who go into a room and they feel like they could just cut the energy with a knife. Like you could just slice it with a knife. It's the same thing because when a collective of people have that kind of um, expectation, it's going to impact you. You're going to pick it up. You're going to be able to sense that that is what they're thinking or that's how they feel about you. All right. So what is the lesson that you could learn in this situation? So the mystical shaman oracle that I have for you is the ghost dance. All right. And I'm going to read directly out of the book so that I can transmit to you the message directly and we don't lose anything in the interpretation. All right. So the ghost dance, the essence of this card is that the ghost dance of the American Plains Indians united the spirits of the living with those of the ancestors to bring peace to the world. When the ancestors are honored, they bring harmony to us. When we hold them responsible for all that is wrong with us today, they haunt us. Honor the spirits of the ancestors and receive their lessons and gifts. This includes honoring your own past lives. The ancestors have a message of healing and a powerful medicine to offer you. Create a sacred moment at your altar, light a candle to them, and let your wisdom infuse you. At this stage in your life, you are done repeating their tragic stories. Step into the abundance that is offered to you. Receive the gifts of those that have come before you and write a new story for your life. If you are trapped in a vicious cycle of nostalgia, mourning a lost youth or opportunities missed, it is time to make an altar for the ancestors. Collect a few photos, light some incense, offer sage, and open the windows of your house to release them to their destiny and to the wind. Be wary of being snared in a relationship with someone from a past lifetime, as the people we loved or hurt have a way of reappearing in our lives. There is no learning for you there anymore. All right. So 
the feather that I have for you is a message also from your guides, which is going to tell you about how you could take a step into the direction of finding your own personal oasis, which is a place of healing. So the feather that you have is that of a canary. The card says, step forward now and sing your song. There is power in finding your voice. So let's take a look at the message. And again, we will read this directly from the book so that we don't lose anything in translation. The canary is a songbird that is thought to have originally migrated from the Canary Islands. The canary has symbolic ties to musicianship and the power of sound and sound healing. They also have close associations with vocal and speech expressions. These birds also signify awakening and heightened sensitivity to the elements. The sensitive nature of canary reminds us to use our voice to uplift, inspire, and heal rather than to disempower ourselves and others. The message, the beautiful tones of your unique song are now coming together in a new way. Let go of hesitation and step fully into empowered expression. This may be a call to music, sound healing, speaking your truth, or teaching others. Be aware that what you have to say and how you express it is important. What song are you singing to yourself? Allow Canary to show you the way to bring your voice and expressions forward so that your song can be heard. Stepping into empowered expression is truly accelerated growth. Allow Canary to guide you through. The energies are communication and sensitivity. Elements are fire and air, so communication with passion. Color is yellow and blue. The affirmation is, I allow my expression to awaken. I am unique and valued. Right. So your Oasis card. This is typically not the kind of card that I would look at as being one that someone would perceive as being a place of peace. But because of the context of this reading, this card, I feel alone, is very much a place of healing and integration for you. So I'm going to read what the affirmation is for this card. I feel alone as being the oasis that you are moving towards in this particular situation. The affirmation, in this lonely moment, I am keeping my head raised and my eyes on the horizon. I know this time will pass and the sun will rise again in the morning with a new day. All right. So just to kind of take a look at all of this together, it appears that you are in a situation where you feel as if you might have some people that don't have the best intentions for you. Um, this may not have been spoken out loud, but there's just this energy that's kind of hanging over your head where you're almost, you know, with this page of swords in reverse, I'm hearing the Democles sword or Damocles sword. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, but you know, the mythology of this is the sword that is swinging over the top of someone constantly and you don't know when it's going to drop and come down close enough to hit you. And so that's the energy that I feel. Um, another phrase that's used is like you're waiting for the ax to fall. This is like waiting for the sword to swipe you. It's like a pendulum. Funny that that's said that way, because um, if you are not familiar with the term pendulum, I would encourage you to look that up. 
there could be one of those that are in effect here energetically um, in the collective of your family that's causing you to feel as if this new direction that you're taking where you are stepping out of a wintry place where you didn't have a lot going for you it was a very barren cold space um, the sun's coming up on the horizon for you melting all that away um, with that energy causing people to feel some kind of way about that, I would encourage you to look that up. Um, feeling as if you are taking action to communicate to people your intentions to move in this direction, knowing that you are standing in the light of your personal truth and what it is that you're supposed to do for you, knowing that you are protected by your guides, your ancestor, ancestors, whatever it is that you believe or how you see that you are being protected because you are going against the grain in order to do something that serves not only you, but all people in your family. As you break out of these harmful patterns. All right. Um, this is important because, um, you know, with this canary feather, I'm hearing, um, canary in a coal mine. There might be a purpose for you in doing this because, you know, they would put, they would have a canary in the coal mine because the canary would serve as a warning that there was some type of gas that was leaking and see all the miners that would be in these mines, they couldn't, they couldn't pick it up. And so by the time anyone recognized that this gas or, you know, whatever the case was there and present in lethal enough concentrations they would have passed so it was the canary that would sing its song or express the fact that there was some sort of danger or that you know these people were not in the right they weren't able to see it but there was something some danger unseen danger that was in their midst you know, with this discovering truth and you standing in the light of truth, I feel like this could be much deeper than um, just standing up and saying, living in your truth just for the sake of that. This could be you helping out people in your family by standing in your light of truth because you can then bear witness to and be a beacon of light in a situation that might actually be quite dangerous for them or there might just be some sort of something on the horizon that they don't see that you do. Um, and this sense of feeling alone, I feel like this is your oasis because you have been so put upon by the group think the energies of people kind of like, is I feel like it's almost like a crabs in a bucket. And this is not to be um, making anyone feel bad about themselves or putting people down, depending on where you fall. But the image of crabs in a bucket is that you have several crabs and they're all trying to climb up the side of the bucket. But as soon as one gets all the way up to the top, the other ones just snatch it back down. I'm not sure why that is, if that's just like a natural reaction or maybe they're trying to get out too. So they're trying to hook on to whatever they can in order to get up at the top. But the net result is that all the crabs end up stuck in the bucket. Um, but I'm also picking up the story of Joseph um, in Christian lore and the story of how Joseph was sold into slavery by his family because they saw him as having a lot of favor and having this bright horizon, these wonderful things going for him that they did not have. And so they kind of turned their back on him. They expected to see him fail and do poorly and actually manufactured a situation where that would happen because it made them feel better about themselves. And in the end, he ended up going through his processes and becoming almost like a canary in a coal mine to where he was able to, you know, alert people that were not his own people to danger and was rewarded because of that. And in the end, he ended up being the one that saved his entire family from drought conditions because he had that ability to do that very much. So showing up like a canary. All right. So Libra, that is what I have for you for your reading. Thank you for joining me on this channel where we may be dazed, but we are not confused until the next video. Bye-bye.